Roots is International School of the Holy Spirit. Yes, I receive it in Jesus' name. Now, let me tell you this because that is so prophetic and so accurate. So during, um, during our camp meeting, one of our speakers was uh, my professor from Pentecostal Theological Seminary. So, Tanita, I want you to hear this as she has spoken it, as the dean has spoken it, many of you have spoken it, Elder Carmelita Chestnut, good morning, Valerie Myers. <clears throat> because I, 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 like, I like for prophecy, prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom to be validated because when it happens, I want you to know that God spoke it here in the school of Holy Spirit. And uh, one of my professors, who was one of our teachers uh, during camp meeting, went back to the seminary that I am a student in. I'm in two schools. I'm working it out. <laughs> and um, just was so overwhelmed with what had happened. Signs and wonders and miracles that had happened at camp meeting. And uh, I've been invited uh, to the seminary by the dean to come and discuss, y'all got to hear this, the possibility of a matriculation agreement between my school here, School of Holy Spirit, Pentecost in a Pandemic, and the school, Pentecostal Theological Seminary. So I want you all to put that in prayer. Glory to God, Dr. Skillman. I'm so excited, Dr. Chalice Bradford, some of you have spoken these things to us. And I just need you to hear what God is doing. Uh, Charlene Brown. And so <laughs> I've, 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 I will be visiting the campus in October. And we've already had one meeting so that uh, those of you that are interested in continuing your education in Pentecostal studies, would actually be able to do so at Pentecostal Theological Seminary, that they're reaching out to um, the schools and to bodies of believers. And Dr. My, I won't mention his name, but my professor who came, he was so moved by what Holy Spirit, he will be with us in December, that he went back to the seminary and began to talk about what he saw at camp meeting and the level of teaching and the level of the quality of worship. <clears throat> I don't know if you all know this, but during camp meeting, we saw so many miracles. And one of the miracles was a miracle of nature. And I got this wording from evangelist Letitia that we saw nature uh, really just in a supernatural way. But during one of the services, the spirit of the Lord was so rich and so deep that the ground actually began to move. The ground. And I remember standing on the stage and Bishop Jackson looked up at me and said, the ground is moving. The ground is moving. And later on in a testimony, one of the saints got up and said, when I saw the ground moving, I thought I was having a heart attack. So I grabbed my water and I drank my water because surely this ground isn't moving. <laughs> wow. So I just want you to know that God is moving by his spirit academically. He's moving by his spirit. And here is where we as believers must understand how to integrate our theology with science, how to integrate our theology with education, that, it, that they can integrate. They don't have to be polarly opposed, that we can integrate, we can integrate science, we can integrate theology and education, that scholarship should not be a bad word to those who are Pentecostal. And one of the things that is happening in this season is an increase, an increase of the appetite 
for Pentecostal scholarship. Uh, wow, God is moving by his spirit. God is moving. And so I want us to hear the word of the Lord. I want us to obey what Holy Spirit is saying to us. When he said to me, get my church to Pentecost, you got to know. I had no idea how this was happening or what was going to happen. But because the spirit of the Lord came up on me and said it, I believed him and I took him at his word. And because of that, I believe that many doors are going to open. Oh my God, the ground was moving literally. The tent, the glory of the Lord. This is not because of me. My obedience is the catalyst to a move of God. Your obedience is a catalyst for a move of God. Would you write that down? My obedience is a catalyst for a move of God. Oh God, hallelujah. My obedience is a catalyst for a move of God. Would you write that down in the chat in Zoom? If you are on free conference call, welcome this morning. But I want you to write that down. My obedience, my obedience to Holy Spirit is a catalyst for move of God. It only takes one person that will obey. It only takes one person that will obey Holy Spirit when he speaks to be a catalyst for move of God. Hallelujah. My obedience to Holy Spirit is the catalyst for a move of God. And so don't minimize your obedience to Holy Spirit. I want you to normalize hearing him and obeying him. I just said that. I want you to normalize hearing him and obeying him. Somebody write that down. Mm. Whoa, glory to God. My obedience to Holy Spirit is a catalyst for move of God. God cannot move in the earth except there is a human being in the earth that is responding to him correctly. God does nothing in the earth except he uses a human being, a mortal, to respond to him appropriately, correctly, to make a difference. The whole Bible is selected people who chose to obey and became a catalyst for different opportunities of God to move in the earth. That's what you got to get. You got to understand how this works. I want you to write this down. Ophuco, God bless you guys. I want you to normalize hearing Holy Spirit. And obeying Holy Spirit. Somebody write that down. I want you to normalize this. I want this to be your everyday expectation. That I will hear Holy Spirit. And I will obey Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Hey, come on. Glory to God. When I'm out of order. When I am in rebellion. When I am in a place of disobedience to Holy Spirit, I can block a move of God. That's how vital our obedience to Holy Spirit is. And to train your human spirit to master that in your life is the abundant life that Jesus promised. I come to give you life. And that more abundantly. But you'll never get it. If you continue to disobey Holy Spirit. I want you to hear me today. Woo, glory to God. Reba. Karen said, I got to go to work. I love you, baby. As you go, make a difference today, Karen. Make a difference. God bless you. God bless you. Normalize. Normalize hearing and obeying Holy Spirit. Normalize this. Let's stop making this irregular. Let's stop making it an anomaly that you hear from Holy Spirit and that you obey. Let's make it normal. 
Glory to God. <laughs> Let's make it normal every day. I wake up with the expectation that I will hear him and that my response is obedience. I don't have three choices. I don't get A, B, C, or D. I get one to obey. Normalize that in your life. Normalize every day I'm going to hear from Holy Spirit. Normalize every day I'm going to obey Holy Spirit. Normalize that I'm going to be talking to Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is going to be talking to me. Normalize that. Hallelujah. 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 This is your new normal. Yes, evangelist. This is your new normal. Your new normal. Your old normal was that you were confused, baffled, and, and flundering, and floundering, and, and not knowing, not having the assurance of what to do, when to do, how to do. You were given to your lust, and your passions, and your ambition, and your dark, dirty demons. You were lending yourself over to your soul, your emotions, your feelings. But in Pentecost, glory to God, in Pentecost, it is normal to hear Holy Spirit every day. It is normal to walk in the Spirit. It is normal to be led by the Spirit. It is normal to hear Holy Spirit in Pentecost. It is normal for you to be led by Holy Spirit in every decision, in every operation of your life. Praise God. Make it your new normal, Dr. Tangerine Hope, prophet of God. Make it your new normal, Ernestina. Devall, make it your new normal, Carolyn Ann Burns, boy, D. Jackson. Carol, stop making this spooky. Come on, Kyle. Stop acting like this is multiple choice. You have one job while you are in this earth, and that is to push the agenda of the kingdom of God forward. That's our assignment. Stop looking for your personal pats on the back. Stop looking for validation, running after, chasing after, and, and flouncing here and there. We have one assignment, and that is to move the kingdom of God's agenda forward. And each of us will do it in our own unique giftings and graces. But it's all pushing the agenda of God forward. And we cannot do it without the power, presence, and person of Holy Spirit. Let's say goodbye to rebellion. Let's say goodbye to personal ambition. Let's say goodbye. Let's close the margin of error. Normalize this. This is Pentecost. Hallelujah. We have but one choice. When your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> I pray your human spirit becomes more sensitive. The ears of your spirit and the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened that you will know the exceeding greatness of his power that has been given to us as saints and that this power is in accordance to the power that God used when he raised Jesus from the dead, the power of Holy Spirit raise Jesus from the dead. I pray for us that we would know that same power in the same measure as Jesus the Christ. 
And we thank you for it. Hallelujah. And we bless you for it. Normalize. 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 Stop making it abnormal that you hear from Holy Spirit. Stop making it abnormal. Come on, Ron, Pastor Ron, Samaya Walker. Hey, God, make me more sensitive. Make me more alert. Hallelujah. Make me more aware of your presence. Let me experience the glory of your goodness through my appropriate response to you, Holy Spirit. I will not, I will not falter in this year, in this month, as we're getting ready to approach a new month. I will not falter. I'm not, I'm going to stop fumbling the ball. Glory to God. Somebody write that down. Woo! I love Holy Spirit. <laughs> Pastor Block, I love it. I have my notes. I have my Bible. I have all of it. And then Holy Spirit just starts speaking. That's all right with us. Normalize. Stop making it abnormal. Stop making it a job for somebody else to hear Holy Spirit. Stop making it somebody else's responsibility. You hear Holy Spirit. You obey. It's normal for you. That even before you put your feet, Pastor Edna Bell, before you put your feet on the floor, that you have said, good morning, Holy Spirit. Before you move in your day, you acquiesce to the power and person of Holy Spirit in every decision. We've got to normalize this. Stop fumbling the ball. Close your margin of error. Glory to God. Mano re ba 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 shik to na ma kiso. Mano re ba 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 shik to na na ma kuso to re ba 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 siya. I was looking in the Old Testament. I was looking in the Old Testament, just searching out Holy Spirit, new semester in school, new books, new courses, new homework, and just looking, looking at how the Spirit of the Lord would come up on. And I, and I landed in, in judges, I landed in judges. <laughs> and, and this is really odd because normally when we think of Holy Spirit, we think of the New Testament alone, but we have got to normalize Holy Spirit as not just a New Testament entity or conversation that we must understand Holy Spirit in the book of Genesis starts there right there in verse one and two. So we've got to see Holy Spirit through the lenses of the complete canon of scripture, not just the New Testament. And so I landed uh, in Judges. I, I landed in Judges. I'm speaking to somebody now about your margin of error. I want, I don't know who it is, but let me just say this to you. Your margin of error is too large. And it is because of your emotional unhealthiness. I don't know who this is for. If it's for you, grab it. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord say that your emotional unhealthiness can be healed today. It must be healed right now. Or it is going to cause a great catastrophe that cannot be repaired. I just heard this in the spirit of the Lord. Who am I talking to? Hey God, hey God, Mary Ann Davis. <laughs> Come on, my bishop, my son. I love you so much, bishop. Your grace, Victor Cousins. Hallelujah. It's an honor to have a scholar, to have these scholars on. Hallelujah. I get the privilege of being called mom by these great scholars and academicians. I'm so honored. I am a blessed woman of God. Hallelujah. I don't know who this is, but somebody needs to hear this word. I just heard this by the Spirit of the Lord. 
Your margin of error is too large. Your margin of error is too big. And it is because of the unhealthiness of your emotions. And you're going to have to get healed. You can be healed right now. I'm speaking this word of the Lord to you right now. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a clinician in the area of counseling or psychology or mental health. That is not the lane that I drive in. That is not the mountain I stand on. But I speak by the spirit of the Lord. Your emotions are going to cause a catastrophe that you cannot correct. And there will not be an opportunity to fix the damage. This is a warning from the Spirit of the Lord that you must now walk in the Spirit. Whoever this is, come on, you can inbox me later, but your emotions are all over everywhere. You are unhealthy. It's an unhealthy emotional life. You do all right for a minute, you do all right for a day or a week or a month or even a year. But there are triggers, there are patterns and behaviors that are going to cause collateral damage. If we do not submit those emotions today to Holy Spirit, it is not that Holy Spirit is not speaking to you, but your emotions are louder. Your emotions are louder. I just heard that word and I'm go I have to declare what Holy Spirit says. I normalize hearing him and obeying him. I will not lie. I am not afraid of controversy. I'm not afraid of it. So I have to tell the truth. Someone who is listening to me right now, Holy Spirit is speaking directly to you and you know it. There may be others. Holy Spirit is is, is gathering you and you, you you say well that's not for me it's okay but there are there there are two people on here right now there will be others later but Holy Spirit says be healed in your emotions right now father we thank you in Jesus name that the power and person and presence of Holy Spirit is sufficient to heal the emotions of these people. We cannot miss it in this hour. The damage is too great and most of it cannot be repaired. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Wow. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, when he comes like that, I don't fool. I don't fool with it. <laughs> I just obey. Praise God. I just obey. Hallelujah. Look at this. And the woman, I'm in Judges 13. The woman gave birth to a boy and named him Samson. Wow. He grew and the Lord blessed him. And the spirit of the Lord began to stir him while he was in Mahana Dan between Zora and Eshtaol. I am reading from my paper Bible, <laughs> my NIV this morning, praise God. And I'm in Judges 13. Judges chapter 13. Glory to God. Oh, Rabbi Shikitam, I'm Oh, God, we give you glory. And the woman gave birth. And you can read this is a, a really um, phenomenal uh, scripture. And Zora, who is the father of Samson, and, well, he's from Zorah, but his name Manoah, from the clan of Dan, had a wife who was sterile. That seems to be consistent in scripture. The angel of the Lord appeared to her 
and said, you are sterile and childless, but you're going to conceive and have a son. Hallelujah. He will be a Nazarite. Whoa, glory, glory, glory. Now, read through that chapter, Judges 13, but jump all the way down to verse 24. And the woman gave birth to a boy and named him Samson. And he grew and the Lord blessed him. And the spirit of the Lord began to stir him while he was in Mahine Dan between Zorah and Eshtael. Wow. <laughs> Woo! Come on, Valerie Thomas. Come on. Come on, Barama. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. I see you are responding to the prophetic. Come on. Hallelujah. Good morning from North Carolina. Good morning. Ekababasia. Holy Spirit, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He is healing these emotions. He is healing these emotions. Hallelujah. Woo, Dr. Bradford, to everyone, God bless you. So we are looking at, hallelujah, how Holy Spirit even began to move upon Samson. Began to move upon Samson. Hallelujah, began to move. I love the way it says here. And he grew and the Lord blessed him and the spirit of the Lord began to stir him. Now, uh, we had a lot of rain last night, so I, I don't know, you know, winds are blowing. There may be some little interference, but we're going we gonna to walk our way through this. Is that all right? Praise God. And the spirit of the Lord began to stir him. Wow, this is Samson. In the name of Jesus. Wow, this is Samson. <laughs> Glory to God. Reba mama shiko to reba baba siya. Mando reba baba 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 si. And so uh, when we understand that in this dispensation that we are reading from, from Samson, there was no indwelling of Holy Spirit. There was no indwelling of Holy Spirit. So, they were at the mercy of Holy Spirit when he would come, when he would come. And the majority of times he would come for special assignments only, for special assignments only. Glory to God, for special assignments only. And so when the Holy Spirit would begin to move upon Samson, it was for a special assignment. Now, I'm going to break this down. We're going to dig into this because this is really, really, really good and really, really necessary for us to talk about it. So these special assignments would come and Holy Spirit in the Old Testament would stir them, would move them and empower them because there was no indwelling of Holy Spirit. So he would just move at certain times. Would just move at certain times. <laughs> Glory to God. And when that move would come, there would be some special assignment that needed to be done that could not be done without Holy Spirit coming upon them. Because they lived in the dispensation of the law, they could not expect a daily, daily communion with Holy Spirit. They could not expect Holy Spirit to dwell in them and to be with them. He only stirred them in certain periods of time when there was a special assignment to be done. Are you following me? This is so good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I love that. And then I was reading in uh, Judges chapter number three. Judges chapter three, 
<laughs> and uh, let's look at this. Look at this. So there was Orth Orthnael that in verse number 10 is the first time we actually hear this language. The spirit of the Lord came upon him, Orthnael, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, who saved them in verse 10, Judges 3 and 10. The spirit of the Lord came up on him so that he became Israel's judge and went to war. Wow. Wow. Watch this. And the Lord gave Cushan, Reshaphalam, king of Aram, into the hands of Othniel, who overpowered him. So the land had peace for 40 years until Othniel, son of Kenaz, died. Now, wow. <laughs> Wow, Holy Spirit uh, just moving up on them now, moving up on them in special ways so that they could accomplish certain assignments, certain feats, certain things that could not be done in their human strength or human wisdom. Wow, I thought that was I thought that was so good. Uh, let's go over to Judges 6. Judges 6, Judges 6, glory to God. Judges chapter number 6. And if we go and look at around verse 34, let's look at this. Verse 34, I'm in Judges chapter number 6, verse 34. You know, this is the school of the Holy Spirit, right? All right. And the Spirit of the Lord came up on Gideon. And he blew a trumpet, summoning the Ebzerites to follow him. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Look at this. He sent messengers, I mean, Judges chapter number 6, verse 34. So Othanael, and then now Gideon. Gideon, the Spirit of the Lord, come upon them for special assignments. Samson. The Spirit of the Lord came upon them to accomplish certain assignments because there was no indwelling of Holy Spirit in them. So Holy Spirit was only upon them for a period to accomplish certain assignments. And the rest of their time, there was no indwelling of Holy Spirit. There was no a blood covenant, these were all under the law. So the dispensation that they lived in made it an amazing thing for the Spirit of the Lord to come upon them <laughs> because that was not their normal. Whoa, glory to God. Verse 34, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. He blew a trumpet summon, summoning the Ab Abiezrites to follow him. He sent messengers through Manasseh, calling them to arms and also into Asher, Zebulun, Nephtali, so that they too went up to meet them. And Gideon, verse 36, said to God, if you, if you will save Israel by my hand as you have promised. Glory to God. Look, I will place a wool fleece on the threshing floor. There's dew only on the fleece and all the ground is dry. Then I will know that you will save Israel by my hand as you say it. And that is what happened. Gideon rose early in the next day. He squeezed the fleece and wrung it out a bowl full of water. Wow. Wow. <laughs> he did it again. This time, let the fleece be dry. Let, the, let, let it be dry. And it was. So. Holy Spirit moved upon Orthanael, who now we see in Judges chapter number three. I want you to see this because I'm going someplace with this. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he became Israel's judge. Now in Judges chapter number six, after God spoke to him, Gideon, about doing this assignment, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Wow. <laughs> so Gideon 
built an altar. Hallelujah. Wow, that, that, that's so powerful unto the Lord and began to worship. Then I was looking at Jephthah in Judges chapter number 11. Come on, we're going someplace. In Judges chapter number 11, glory to God. In Judges chapter number 11, Jephthah, we know about Jephthah a little bit. Hallelujah. But look at verse number 29. Look at Judges 11 and 29. Ha. Huh. So Jephthah, of course, sends a message to a king that was tormenting them. But the king of Ammon, verse 28, however, paid no attention to the message that Jephthah sent him. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah. Good God Almighty. Whoa, yes, 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 yes. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah. He crossed Gilead and Manasseh, passed through Mitzvah of Gilead. And from there he advanced against the Ammonites. My God. The spirit of the Lord, because it wasn't normal for them to engage the spirit of the Lord on a regular basis. He only came up on them for special assignments. <laughs> now, if we look at Samson, praise God. Let's run over to Judges chapter number 14. Hallelujah. <laughs> let's look at 14 and 6. And I, I just love this. When I started digging into it, I was like, wow, this is powerful. This is the school of the Holy Spirit, baby. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome. My God. Now, Judges 14 and 6. The Spirit of the Lord. Let's just run back into that. Uh, of course, Samson, Samson had, had some challenges. We already know that. Samson went down to Timnah, verse 5, together with his father and mother. And as they approach the vineyards of Timnah, suddenly a young lion came roaring toward him. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him in power so that he tore the lion apart with his bare hand as he might have torn a young goat. Wow, wow, wow. The spirit of the Lord came up on him. That's 14 and six. Let's look at verse number 19, same chapter. Same chapter, same chapter, same chapter. <laughs> Then the spirit of the Lord came upon him in power. He went down to Ashkelon, struck down 30 of their men, stripped them of their belongings, and gave their clothes to those who had explained the riddle. Wow. Wow. The spirit of the Lord came upon him and... He tore, my God, the clothes. He struck down 30 men with his bare hands. Wow, the spirit of the Lord would come upon him. The spirit of the Lord would come upon him. Now, let's go to 15, chapter 14. You got to read all in between because we know Samson had some challenges. And we all have challenges if we're not engaging the Holy Spirit every day. This is what I, I want to share with you, the distinction of the dispensations. One is only Spirit of the Lord coming upon them, dealing with them to accomplish certain assignments. We have the Spirit of the Lord dealing with us every day, communing with us every day, and not just in special assignments. You know, look, look at the difference. Look at the, the advantage, if you will, that we have 
having Holy Spirit as normal in our lives versus them having Holy Spirit at only certain times to accomplish something that was absolutely beyond their human ability and capacity. Same Holy Spirit, but because the dispensation was a different dispensation, it the people could not commune. Holy Spirit wasn't available for everybody to commune. Holy Spirit wasn't available. Holy Spirit was not given to the masses, but only certain people at certain times to do certain assignments. We live in a dispensation where Holy Spirit is living in us and dwelling in us and making God real through us. I just want you to see this. And, and, and one person under the power of Holy Spirit can become a catalyst for a move of God. This, this, okay, so I, you know, I get excited about the academics of, of the word. I get excited about the academics of Holy Spirit. I get excited about following the trail and following the movements of Holy Spirit, following, I, I, I just see this, this is so good. <laughs> wow, wow. Now, let's look at 15 and let's look at verse 14. All right, so Samson says, swear to me that you won't kill yourselves. He's in war again. He's dealing with these Philistines and he's, 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 he's in some challenges and we know that. And they said, uh, swear to me that you won't kill me yourselves. Agreed, they answered. We will only tie you up and hand you over to them, but we will not kill you, the Philistines. So they bound him with two new ropes and led him up from the rock. And as he approached Lehi, the Philistines came toward him shouting. And the spirit of the Lord <laughs> came upon him in power. And the ropes on his arms became like charred flax. And the bindings dropped from his hands. And finding a fresh jawbone of a donkey, he grabbed it and struck down a thousand men. Whoa, glory, glory, glory. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? My God, my God. God, I want you to understand. So we're, we're walking the trail of Holy Spirit right into Pentecost. Right into Pentecost. We're walking, we, we, we're going to study him right into Pentecost. Now watch this, watch this. So Samson now is in trouble with the Philistines. He kind of stayed in there with that. And here he is in a tight jam. There's no internet, there's no telephones, there's no television, there's no method of communication. And here's what the word says. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him in power. Oh my God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And, and look, he's bound up. He's bound up by the Philistines. He's bound up with ropes and chains by the Philistines and they promised not to kill him and they lied. And Samson saw them coming at him. Come on now. And when they started coming at him, the spirit of the Lord came upon him. And when the spirit of the Lord came upon him in power, the ropes on his arms became like charred flax and the bindings dropped from his hands. My God. So his power, the power of the Holy Spirit empowered him in such a way that the bondage, the tying up was broken and burned off of him. Now we're dealing with a dispensation where Holy Spirit is not free to flow to the masses, but his power 
is so intense that still he could not remain bound up. That his enemy could not kill him. That he would not die at the hands of the Philistines. Y'all not going to say nothing to me. My God, in the name of Jesus. Woo, glory, glory, glory. I need you to see this. I need you to see the intensity and power of Holy Spirit. Now, they did not live in an hour where Holy Spirit could indwell them. They did not live in an hour where they could be led by Holy Spirit every day. They did not live in the dispensation where they could access the gifts of the Spirit. They did not live like that. But Holy Spirit, His same power, His same power was present, but only on special occasions. Whoa, are y'all listening to me? The spirit of the Lord would come upon Samson. The spirit of the Lord came upon Othaniel. The spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. And we're gonna chase, we're gonna chase this. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move through this because it is important that you understand number one, the power and person of Holy Spirit. It is also important, number two, that you learn and understand how to cherish Holy Spirit's presence in your life on a day-to-day -day basis. Hallelujah. You've got to understand the difference of living under the law and living now in the dispensation of Holy Spirit. You've got to understand the benefit, I go back to my book, the advantage that you and I have living in this dispensation. They could only have an encounter with Holy Spirit in special moments. And we have the power person of Holy Spirit every day and won't obey him, won't listen, won't submit, won't surrender, still struggling, don't you know? How great it is for us to live in the dispensation of Holy Spirit. Oh, glory to God. Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson, enabling him to perform supernatural feats of strength in overcoming the Philistines. Wow. <laughs> this is so important. Because in the book of Judges, when I was chasing it, this is the, the first time in Judges 3 when Spirit of the Lord comes upon us and Spirit of the Lord is seen as that title, the Spirit of the Lord came upon them. Judges 3 is the first time we see that. And in the book of Judges, I wrote this down, it appears more than any other book in the Bible. Oh, glory to God. We are in school. We are in school, saints of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Come on here. Valerie Myers, let's go. Overseer Lenita, come on, Pastor Darrell. Listen, the spirit of the Lord would come upon them. And more than any book of the Bible, do we hear this terminology and look at the greatness of what would happen when the Spirit of the Lord would come upon them. Whoa! <laughs> uh, there's a song Fred Hammond made uh, famous. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will dance like David danced. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, we're going to chase that too. Spirit of the Lord comes upon, I will dance like David danced. I will sing like David sang. I will sing, I will dance, I will dance like David danced. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, my God. And, and, and I, I just want to add a verse. Can I add a verse? When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will live like Spirit says. I will do what Spirit says. It may not be a dance. It may not be a song. But I will obey. 
obey what spirit says. And when your spirit speaks to me, because now I have the indwelling of Holy Spirit, for God dwells in my heart by faith through his spirit. Then I experience the outpouring of Holy Spirit in Pentecost. I speak in tongues as the evidence, as the initial evidence. But there is a piety. There is a lifestyle that must accompany the power. There cannot be power without piety. And there should not be piety without power. Okay, y'all, 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 y'all. Piety is the lifestyle. It is holiness, a commitment to obedience, piety. But piety without the spirit is simply bondage. But Holy Spirit without piety is dangerous. So I, I don't just want Holy Spirit. I want the lifestyle of Holy Spirit so that I can obey. I, I, I'm just... Ooh. Right now, yes, Tanya, thank you right now. And that's that's what is registering. That's that's the number. Listen, it's going to go to thousands. And we decree in the name of Jesus that when the spirit of the Lord comes up on you today, you will obey. We're going to decree that now when the spirit of the Lord comes up on you today, because it's going to be normal for you, that you will obey. You will obey, you will obey, you will obey. You will obey because you could be the catalyst. Your obedience could be the catalyst for the move of God. We're not finished with this. We're going to dig into this. We're going to, whoo, glory to God. We're going to unpack this. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory to God. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for the spirit of the Lord in this dispensation, how he moves. Hallelujah, how he is sharing with us and caring for us. And I give you praise that my obedience can be a catalyst for the move of God. Oh, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Glory, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you. We honor you, we honor you, we honor you. Glory to God. We yield to you. We yield to you. We yield to you. We are mastering our human spirit. Glory to God. And when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree. Hallelujah. My answer is yes. Glory to God. Hey, I got to go. <laughs> Time goes so fast. My God. Woo, I have to remember that I don't have but an hour up in here. <laughs> I have to remember it because this is for me a three-hour class. We could be sitting in this class, my God, till noon. But listen, I need you to share it on your pages. Thank you so much. Hashtag Pentecost in a pandemic. Hashtag glory to God. School of the Holy Ghost. Hashtag it. In my Lord, Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Benina. Thank you. Ananamashi. Atamani Osaya. I accept it in Jesus' name. Glory to God. We're going to unpack this. I want to unpack this. I want to show you. We're going to chase this down. Hallelujah. So that we understand the beauty of living in a dispensation. We have an advantage. We have him, the advantage himself in our lives. My God. Come on, somebody. I love y'all. I got to go. <laughs> Share this. Come on back. We're going to study it out.